What got me into playing drums when I was a little kid, being a hyper little kid, I was drawn toward you know high energy, so I was totally into sports. And I was always into music because my parents were always playing jazz and classical. They always had music on. You, there were movies of me. As soon as I started walking, I was, I was dancing and running around the house. And every year they had a Memorial Day parade in this little town of Stockbridge, like 3,000 people, picturesque little New England town. And they had a parade, and this marching band would come off the bus, and then the, the drum line would start. You know, when I get the cadence going, I was blown away, and I had this little bike, and I'd ride around them all day, following them. They'd march through the town. And I remember, you know, going home and trying to play and stuff. And so, and this was maybe second grade, third grade. In fourth grade, they ask you what instrument you want to play. I said, I want to play drums. Then a, a Hard Day's Night came out, and I saw Hard Day's Night in a movie theater. A week later, I had a band. So I had a, all I had was a snare drum and a cymbal. I had a band called the Alley Cats, and we were doing the Beatles and, you know, Beach Boys, whatever was hip at that time, Little Deuce Coop, Love Potion Number 9, and we won talent contests and we played wherever. By the time I was 18, I was studying with the percussionists from the Boston Symphony Orchestra, studying timpani and mallets and, uh, and snare drum, and I was practicing nine hours a day uh, and playing five nights a week in a jazz trio. I was self-taught. Which was cool, you know. I, we had I, my parents let me play, practice with the bands in in the living room. But there was a kid that was taking lessons from the percussionists from the Boston Symphony Orchestra, and, which they came up in our area. And so I went to take lessons, and he immediately, basically stripped me down and said, "No, we got to start from the beginning." So he started giving me formal lessons, and for some reason, I just went with the program. Mostly it was on mallets, tim you know, marimba or vibes, timpani, and legitimate snare drum. I don't know, I, I, and eventually I, got, I did five years of university doing that and studied with Vic Firth. Where I grew up, he was with the Boston Symphony Orchestra and so I'd go take private lessons. Here's the way Vic Firth is, great guy, he does not mess around. When you have an assignment for Vic Firth, if you make a mistake when you're like, you know, playing through an etude or a piece of music, you know, he has his own books, He'll say, uh, excuse, hold on, that was wrong. He'll let you do it again. If you make a mistake again, next, you do it next week. He just moves to the next page. So if you're, your lesson, if you're not prepared, could be over in 15 minutes. <laughs> so he just doesn't have time to waste with people who are not going to play at the level that he expects from you. And you should, in one week, be able to prepare those lessons for him. Nice guy, but extremely uh, business-like and, and uh, doesn't want to mess around with people who aren't serious. But my real formal training on drum set was when I was 23. I studied with Alan Dawson, in, uh, the, who used to teach at the Berkeley School of Music in Boston, and uh, Gary Chester, a, a well-renowned uh, New York uh, session drummer. And then I was practicing eight, nine hours a day on the drum set. It took me years to figure out how it really helped me today. The big thing is discipline, massive discipline. You you. It, it's like like playing in the NFL or something. You have to deal with conductors. You have to deal with uh, you know very very strict intense teachers. High demands on all levels. You know, uh, if, at the university, you know, if you're in an orchestra and you're not playing your part, the conductor stops and in front of 60 people, you're being reprimanded, and they demand your ability to be able to play in time, to play the right notes, to play with the ensemble. You know, I had to study ear training, piano, conducting, uh, music theory and music history for, for four years, uh, you know, recitals and performances, and you had to be responsible and, and on time, disciplined, like unbelievable, which, and then eventually, these skills to be able to read and write music makes it possible for me to do things like when I did the Kennedy Center Honors and I'm in the band honoring The Who and George Jones, and they're throwing charts out in front of you, and not only am I writing my parts up, but I'm, I can follow chord changes and understand the language of music. And they're making edits up until the day of the show, on the day of the show. And you know, you don't want to blow that. <laughs> That's where the reading and writing comes. On the one hand, I'm a street player, self-taught, raw, use my ears. On the other hand, I can read and write and have the discipline and the fortitude to stay you know, in the game. I really what I wanted to do is play in a band. I always was. I just couldn't put it together how I was going to make a living doing this. I thought 
go to school, get into an orchestra, teach at a university, blah, 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 blah. What happened was these guys in Indiana, where I went to college, Bloomington, college town, said, you got to come back. We're going to start a band. We're going to invest $30,000. We're going to get a truck. We're going to get a PA. We're going to get equipment, and we're going to make it. We lived in a band house. We were living the dream, seven days, seven nights a week. And after three years, I decided, you know, this band isn't making it, so I think I'm going to move to New York. I figured out I knew more people in New York than in L.A., so I decided I'd move to New York. And two weeks before, this, I heard about this Johnny Cougar guy who had a song on the radio called I Need a Lover, uh, and he was touring, opening up for Kiss and touring around, but I wasn't really into the, the, the music at that time. As a matter of fact, I became the drummer I used to make fun of. You know, that less is more laying it down. Now I'm an expert at it. And um, <clears throat> I, uh, I, aud I auditioned. I found out they were looking for a drummer. They'd fired the drummer. And basically, I knew one guy in the band. I said, I'd like to audition. And they told me to be familiar with the record. And so I basically, t with that discipline, I practiced six, eight hours a day, memorized every single note on that record, just practiced those songs. I, I didn't understand the language of the simplicity of John Mellencamp's, or John Cougar at that time, his music. You know, doo-ga, doo-doo-ga, doo-ga, doo-doo-ga, ga doo doo I'm like, why didn't go, I thought there was so much hipper fills, but I didn't understand the whole, like that Rolling Stones approach of, playing the song, playing the music, feel, groove, attitude. And uh, anyway, I memorized the record and I, and I won the audition. It was 50 drummers, I won. And it took me two years to learn how to play simple and learn how to serve the, the, the song.